So good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. So this week's Torah portion is, is uh, the starting of the book of Leviticus. In Hebrew, they call the book of Leviticus Vayikra, and in English, it means, and he called. And uh, uh, it's very important uh, uh, that this book in the eyes of uh, Judaism is a very important book. In, in fact, after the children learn about God the creator, that God created the heavens and the earth, the next, the next thing that they, they are taught is the book of uh, the book of Vayikra, the book of Leviticus. Uh, even before they learn about uh, the, the Noah's Ark and all the animals, even before they learn about uh, uh, the details of creation. And the reason for that is they want to, to, to start the child with a good foundation about how they should live their life, right? How they should live a holy life. They, they, they already instill to the young children, and, and, and God is reminding us and instilling, instilling to the young children that they are a set apart people, that they are being called to be holy, separate, so that they can live pure lives. And uh, and the uh, and the sages uh, and, and one of the uh, uh, founders of Kabbalah, uh, he said that the book of Leviticus is really called the book. The, or the laws of the priesthood, the laws of the priesthood. And, that, and that's interesting because how is that relevant to us today? Remember? Um, and, and we see here that if a man decides to, go, to draw close to God, he must have to offer up a sacrifice that serves as an atonement, allowing him to enter the presence of God. So if you're new to the channel, like I said, we are a Messianic congregation. If, if you uh, want to learn more about our ministry, you can see, you, you can uh, go to our website, which connects to our YouTube channel, where you can listen to uh, messages that, uh, that uh, we have uh, posted in that uh, website, in that uh, YouTube channel. And Baikra is um, the, the very first Torah portion in the book of Leviticus, has five chapters. And it starts out with a call of Moses, a uh, call of God to Moses to bring a burnt offering. Again, or, uh, if you missed any of the details, uh, last year I spoke about the details of the different sacrifices. I'm not going to uh, go through that in details uh, today, but you can, you're welcome to listen to that uh, from last year's teaching. Chapter two is talking about the bringing of the grain offering. Chapter three is talking about the bringing of the peace offering. Chapter four is the bringing of the sin and guilt offering. And finally, chapter five talks about vows and oaths and how we should uh, avoid that. Uh, and if we do, uh, how we should honor it. And finally, touching an unclean thing. So, uh, so today, like I said, if you go to the next slide, Jesse, today is uh, uh, people are saying, many, many has, has, has the mistaken idea that because Yeshua died and uh, rose again, that Yeshua has, has ended the need for the temple or the sacrifices, right? Because there's no temple today. It seems as though sacrifices seems to be obsolete or irrelevant but despite that, the Jews continue to study the sacrifices and the laws. Why? Uh, some teach that, uh, remember, there are 613 laws, commandments, and, um, and uh, many of them only deal, some of them only deal for women, only for women. Some of them only deal with uh, if you're a priest, and some of them only deal if you are a male. Right. So how can how can a, how can a, a male person, for example, fulfill all those six hundred and thirty if it only applies? It doesn't all that all of them applies to him, right? Some of them only applies if you live in the land of Israel. So the, the sages say the fact that when, whenever you even study it, whenever you even you you even study the the the, the commandments. It is as if, say that it is as if you already fulfilled it. So uh, that's how you go around it. That's why um, the 613 is uh, something that all of us can, can, can participate. Like even today, 
when we, even when we're talking about the sacrifices, even though we don't have a sacrifice to bring to the altar, when we're studying it, it's sacrifice. The Wi-Fi is unstable. So, so you can see here that that the sacrifice will continue on. Say that it will continue on. In fact, in my scripture there in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, even before, see that even before, even before. Uh, the commandment to uh, to build the, the tabernacle, God already has, a, has a, an altar in heaven. Amen? <laughs> Remember, the, the, the altar, the tabernacle was a pattern that Moses copied when God showed it to him in heaven, right? So, so even before, say that even before, even before, they they uh, they were instructed to build a temple. The sacrifice was already taking place in heaven. In fact, it says that in Revelation chapter eight, talking about those uh, whose names will be in the book of life, belonging to the Lamb, he was slaughtered before the world was. Founded. In other words, before the world was even formed, you know, the Messiah was already slain. Amen. So the sacrifices, even though there's no physical temple, there's a spiritual temple. Amen. In heaven. So uh, and that's why uh, in the midrash we be, they said they begin to educate the children with sacrifices. So when the redemption comes, when the Messiah returns, they will know how, uh, the order of the sacrifices. And they will be prepared to go up to the temples and offer sacrifices as the, and, and, and the Levitical service according to the prescribed order. So go to the next slide. So, so it said many believe, many believe today because uh, uh, there is, because the Yeshua died and uh, was rose again, that, that the Yeshua's death provided the ultimate atonement. Um, some even go far to assume that because Yeshua sacrificed there is no need for the sacrificial system. That is simply not the case. Amen. The Messiah's sacrifice cannot make the limit the Levitical sacrifices obsolete. Like I said, why? Because there is already uh, there is sacrifice happening. There is sacrifice happening in heaven as we speak. Amen. I still here. Mm -hmm. So so uh, so uh, it, so uh, it says here that. All the sacrifices, anyways, the burnt offering, the grain offering, the peace offering, as you can see there in the chart, uh, the sin offering and the guilt offering, all of them, all of them point to the Messiah, right? All of them point to the Messiah. So, so uh, you know, the the like the uh, the burnt offering is is voluntary, and uh, Allah means, as we learn, we learn later, means to ascend. And you see here this this uh, this sacrifice, everything gets consumed. Everything gets consumed. Everything ascends to God. Not, nothing, nothing is even given. Uh, not a piece given to the giver. Not a piece is given to the priest. Well, all other sacrifices, the uh, there is a human and God uh, sharing. Like for example, the the peace offering is uh, is shared by the giver. He gets to partake to eat it. He has to invite at least 30 people to partake of the, the peace offering. The priest gets to eat, and all the, the, the rest is burned up to God. So, so you can see here that, but all of that, the burnt offering is uh, is pointing to Yeshua. He completely gave his life. The grain offering is the bread of life, the living bread. The priest <laughs> offering, Yeshua brought peace between us and God. And we also learned that the sin offering, Yeshua paid for paid out for our sin debt. And finally, the guilt offering, Yeshua took away all our guilt and our shame. Amen. So uh, the, the, the book of Leviticus reminds us of our priestly calling, isn't it? In, in Exodus chapter 19, remember the, uh, the engagement? I told you last time there was this was the engagement when God asked uh, Moses to tell the children of Israel. He says, verse 5, 19, verse 5. Therefore, if you will listen, hearken unto my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own treasure from among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. You shall be, verse 6, you shall be unto me. What is that? 
a kingdom of priests in a holy nation. So here, uh, God is uh, telling the children of Israel, look at, listen, if you, if you, uh, if you um, keep my covenant, if you listen to my voice, you will become a kingdom of priests. Wow, say wow. wow. Now in Revelation chapter 4, we sang this this morning. And uh, John, Yohanan saw a vision, the seven messianic communities in the province of Asia. He says, grace and shalom to you from the one. He's talking about who's the one here. Talking about Yeshua, who is the one who was, who is and is coming from the sevenfold spirit before his throne. Verse 5. And from Yeshua the Messiah, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the earth's king, verse, and to him, the one who loves us and who has freed us from our sins at the cost of his blood, verse 6, who has caused us to be a kingdom that is, Kohadim in English, priest for God, his father. So he, when Yeshua returns, to establish his messianic kingdom here, he will train us. He will train us to be his priests. Amen. Are you still here? Amen. So that on the on after the seven thousand year reign is over, the one thousand year reign is over, he will present all of us as his priests before the Father. Amen. Are you still here? Amen. So his ministry today and in the coming future is. To make us his priest. Look at that. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, he says there, verse 9, but you are a chosen people, the king's kohanim, again, the king's priest, a holy nation, a people for God to possess. Why? Look at that. Why? In order for you to declare the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Verse 10, once you are not a people, but now you are God's people before you have not received mercy, but now you have mercy. So in order to what? To declare his praises, the one who took you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we are to, to be his royal priesthood. Amen. So the book of Leviticus that's why it's very important because it's really, we, should be, we should be studying this book. It speaks about uh, our goal, our role. Amen. So, like I said, uh, go to the next slide. I think all the all the sacrifices, all the sacrifices point to Yeshua. Leviticus starts out of God calling Moses, if any man want to draw near and come close to God, we need to bring a sacrifice. So the korban here is, uh, in English, is called offering. And when we, when, 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 if, if you look at it uh, from the perspective of in the wilderness, if you wanted to draw near to God, to enter into the, the tabernacle, what do you, if you were not a priest or a Levite, what do you need to do? You need to bring an offering whether it's the voluntary offering or whether it's a mandatory offering. So you are to, to bring it into, it literally bring it close to God. Amen, are you still here? So, so the Ramban, the grandson of the Ramban, he says that the sacrifices are a symbol for us to see what is going on, on with the animal, right? Why? Because if you go to the next slide, you see here that, when you bring the offering, as Sister, uh, as, um, uh, Sister Lucia read this to us, when you bring the offering of the herd, you shall offer a male without blemish, verse 4, and you shall lay your hand on the animal. So you can imagine if you're bringing a burnt offering, for example, of a, uh, of a, uh, of a uh, male without blemish, right? You have selected this. This animal, you have chosen it. He is the choices of your cattle. And uh, you are about to bring it to, to the priest. And, 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 and it says there, verse 4, you shall lay your hand on the head 
of this bird of this the, of the animal uh, to make an atonement for you, and you sh and he shall and he shall the priest shall kill it before the Lord, and the sons uh, Aaron's sons the priest shall present shall collect the blood and dash the blood against the altar. So you see here, it's a very graphic. It's a very graphic. Uh, process where if you are not moved by it, it's like, it, 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 can you imagine God is, is letting you know that that animal represents you and that animal spilled his blood on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Are you still here? Yeah. So it's, it, it's supposed to, uh, for you to, to think of, if, especially if, if that animal was for your sin offering, for example. So you're gonna think you're, it's it's supposed to uh, the, the 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 graphic illustration, the graphic process, the dramatic process of the animal dying uh, in front of you and the blood being spilled and the animal being cut into pieces is supposed to move you in and to shake you. It's like a wake up call, as Sister Lucia said. It's a wake up call. Uh, and it will often, it's supposed to shake you up. Ramban is saying, because if you, if you, uh, if you physically see it, you will remember it. And that, that experience is supposed to, to bring you into repentance, bring you into a transformative process, right? If you experience a, a traumatic experience, like a near death experience, it's like a near, that experience. So the point of the korban is to make a person see uh, the uh, the illustration of what it looks like if you were the one being offered. I see it here. So it says here that the korbanos, the drawing near, is greatly beloved by God. Why? Because not because God is as a uh, uh, rather than sell red to us, God is, is not thirsty. He's not hungry for me. Amen. Are you still here? He's not thirsty for blood. But what God is looking for is the transforming effect in the lives of the person. Amen. Are you still here? Why? Uh, it, it, so what's happening in the animal, the, the person should have mental image that they are alive by the grace of God. Are you still here? and causes the person to be submissive, to be humble, it generates a feeling of awe and reverence and self-nullification in the presence of God. You can understand that God is so powerful and yet God is so forgiving and he spared your life. He used another vessel to pay for your sins and that experience is supposed to transform you. So, so that, that's why if you go, go to the next slide, you'll see here that God was rebuking the children of Israel, right? In, in the book of Jeremiah, it says, that says Adonai Shavuot, the God of Israel, you may well eat the meat of your burnt offering along with, uh, with your sacrifices. For I didn't speak to your ancestors or give them orders concerning burnt offering or sacrifices when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. Rather, what I did order them is to pay attention to what I say. Then I will be your God, and then you will be my people in, every, in everything. Live according to the way that I ordered you so that these things will go well with you. So God, what God is saying, he's going back to what we, we read earlier in Exodus chapter 19. He said, if we will listen and we will obey, if we will listen and we will obey, then we don't need to bring a sin off. Are you still here? So what God is saying is, you know, it, 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 he's, not, he's not dismissing the, the, the korbanot or the sacrifices. What God is saying, if this thing is not moving you, then don't bother bringing it. Are you still here? So, uh, so go to the next slide. So, so again, there's another scripture in, in Hosea chapter 6. A lot of people use this verse to say, to justify why this, the, the sacrifice is no longer there. So come, let us return to Adonai, for he has torn and he will heal us. He has struck 
and he will bind, up, bind our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise up. So again, talking about, you know, we are in the 2000 year reign now. Yeshua is coming. He's going to revive us. There's going to be a resurrection. He will raise us up. And look at this verse, verse six. For what I desire is mercy, not sacrifices. Knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. So again, um, you know, God is, um, is, uh, is uh, making the point that, uh, you know, the, 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 the sacrifices is not like bribe, right? Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be bad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna offer money. You know, it's not, we're not bribing God from this. Are you still here? Yeah. So, so mankind uh, has made it into a a process that they can almost like, you know, uh, they can they can make it as an excuse instead of. It's what, what it was designed by God to be a transformative experience so that we can repent and turn and acknowledge and and uh, and uh, uh, thank God because the, the, it, this is not a vehicle for bribing and, the, and, and, and they became offensive, sinful to God. We are making a mockery or in, insulting God by... By okay, I, I'm gonna be dishonest in business, and I'm just gonna give a sacrifice. And that was not that's what that is not the intent of God. That's why He's saying, you know, I don't need your animals, I don't need your blood. I what I need is I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. I think I have another slide, Jesse. I'm not sure if there's another scripture. No, it didn't move, Jesse. So in Isaiah. Uh, it says that for there is what Adonai says. As for the Enoch's who keep my Sabbaths, who chose what pleases me and hold fast my covenant in my house, within my walls, I will give them power and name greater than the sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will not be cut off. He's talking about the converts that keep the Sabbaths. In all that. So verse 6, and as to the foreigners who join themselves to Adonai to serve him, to love the name of Adonai and to, to, to be his workers who will keep Sabbath and not profane it, who hold fast my covenant. Verse 7, I will bring them to the holy mountain and make them joyful in the house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted in my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer. So here again, in contrast, uh, if you have, if you are obeying God, God will honor the, the sacrifice that we give Him. Amen. I still here. Um, God said, you know, you don't have to give it. If you are following me, you don't even have to give anything. But if you want to give to give God, He will all the more. Or he will accept it. And that, so are you still here? Yeah. But God said, if you're not following me, don't even bother giving it. Are, are you still here? So that's the, the positive message of Isaiah 56. He's talking about not only, he said, you know, not only the children of Israel, those who, 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 who chose to join themselves to Adonai and serve him and love his name. Amen. Are you still here? So um, if you go to the next, you see here that like I said that the, uh, and there's another scripture, Isaiah, where all the sacrifices are where are all the sacrifices offered to me as Adonai? I am fed up with burnt offerings of rams and fat, the fatted animals. I get no pleasure from the blood of bulls and the lambs of goats. Yes, you come to appear in my presence, but who asked you to, to, to do this? <laughs> to trample through my courtyard. Stop bringing worthless grain offering. Verse 15. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you, no matter how much you pray. I will not be listening because your hands are covered with blood. Wash yourselves, verse 16. Clean your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Relieve the oppressed. Defend the orphans. Plead for the widows. Proverbs chapter 15. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayers 
of the upright is his delight. Proverbs 29, verse 9, 28, verse 9. If a person will not eat the sacrifice, Yeshua is the sacrifice. Yeshua is the, uh, did we lose, did we lose the people in the, so in, in Exodus chapter 12, it reminds us of Yeshua is the sacrifice that we are to bring to the altar. He's still here. So it says there that you shall say, if the children will ask you, what is this? Verse Exodus chapter 12, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. For, he, for, for that he passed over the houses of the children of Israel of Egypt. So what God is saying is the Passover lamb is God's Passover lamb. Yeah. Yeah. In John chapter 3, verse 16, 1 John 3, 16, the way that we have to come to, to, know, to, to know love is through his having laid his own life for us. So Yeshua laid, say that Yeshua laid his life for us. Amen? Say that Yeshua, Yeshua. laid his life for us. In Exodus chapter 12, look at this. You shall keep the lamb on, on the 10th day. You shall, keep the, you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Talking about the month of Nisan. And the whole assembly, look at this. The whole assembly of the congregation of Israel. So the whole congregation, remember, they were instructed to, to take a lamb from among the flocks on the 10th day and then keep them in their homes. And then on the 14th day, right? So how many, so how many families were there? There was at least 600,000 men recorded in the book of Exodus. So 600 divided by 10, about... Uh, 600,000 divided by about 6,000 homes, 6,000 lambs minimum, right? Are you still here? 6,000 lambs are to be slaughtered. But look at that. On the 14th day, say it on the 14th day, the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall what? Shall kill it. Say that, shall kill it at dusk. Are you still here? It didn't say it shall kill them. He's, they're talking, God is talking about a single lamb, one lamb. They will kill a single lamb. <laughs> and you know what he's talking about. He's talking about Yeshua who laid his life for us. So when we go to the altar before God, who are we bringing with us? The lamb. The lamb. We're bringing Yeshua with us. And God is saying, look at what I, what, 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 look at the Passover sacrifice. Look at what Yeshua did. He died for you. The blood, you saw the blood? You saw the piercing? You saw the beating? Yeah, I still hear. And that is supposed to what? To move us. Are you still here? We should be, we should be thankful. Amen. We should be thankful. It should be a traumatic, life-changing experience for us. It should, it should change us. It should, it should make us. Born again. Are you still here? Yes. But it does not end in the altar. Are you still here? It does not end in the altar. Why? Because God said, you come. Do you want to draw close to me? Come. The next thing you're going to see in the tabernacle is there's a water basin. Say that water basin. And what does the, what does the, the priest do? He washes his hands. Say that he washes his hands. And he has to wash his feet. He doesn't wash his whole body. Am I still here? Yeah. When Peter asked him, why are you not washing my whole body? Just your feet. He said, everything is clean except the foot. Are you still here? Yeah. So what does the hand and the feet represent? The hand represents our work. Say that our words. God said, I want you to wash it clean. Are you still here? I want you to, to serve me with clean hands. And the feet is what? Is the feet is the, is the, is the one that will take you. Amen. Your walk, your walk should also be clean before God. Are you still here? So God said, I want your works and your walk presented, washed, clean. And then you can enter the Holy of Holies. What's in the enter the Holy of Holies? You will see the table of showbread. The table of showbread is represented of the word of God. The word of God, we should eat. Uh, you know, eat the bread, the bread of life, the word of God. And if we eat the bread of life, what will happen? We will, it will fuel the light that's in the menorah. And then our, 
our prayer and praise is the prayer altar there. Amen. So, so God wants us to enter in. God wants us to enter in because we, we often we just stop on the altar and just say, oh God, God has forgiven my sin. And then you walk out of there the same way as the children of Israel when they were offering the sacrifices. It did not change them. Say that it did not change them. It did not cause them to move beyond the altar, the brazen altar, because God wanted them to go in, to enter in, to enter in. If you want to draw close to God, what do we do? Amen. Are you still here? Yeah. Um, go to the next slide. So we see here that Yeshua <laughs> is the second Adam. In um, in a Jewish writing, uh, let me just. Uh, uh, there is a uh, 18th century rabbi, his name is Rabbi Salman, who presented a teaching regarding Leviticus chapter 1, verse 2. Because he noticed that in the Hebrew, the way this verse is written, verse 2, it says, and the children of Israel, and say unto them, when any man of you bring in an offering unto the Lord. So he said that in the Hebrew, there is some grammatical uh, uh, misstatement. So when you look at how he was grammatically formed, he said there is a hint, say that there's a hint to this verse relating to the Messiah. Because he says that normally you can read, if any man of you bring in an offering unto the Lord. So that's the English translation. But he said this verse, because of the grammatical um, Hebrew grammatical errors, you can actually read it this way. When Adam brings from you all an offering unto the Lord. So in other words, he's talking about the second Adam, the second Adam. So the man there, Adam, the, the word man is in Hebrew, Adam. So he's saying it's, it's, it could be read as when Adam, when Adam brings for you all an offering unto the Lord. So, so this rabbi, Rabbi Samuel, suggests that there's an alternative interpretation of, of this mystical meaning that this Adam can only be the heavenly Adam, the one in the physical, the, the, the one in the physical universe. Uh, Adam, he failed, the first Adam, but he's talking about there's a heavenly Adam that will that will offer himself a sacrifice for all of us. So this mystical Adam. Going to go to the next time, this, this, this concept of mystical Adam is also picked up in the prophecy of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter one. You know, the book of Ezekiel, just to give you a little bit of Jewish history, the view book of Ezekiel was almost, uh, one of them was almost taken out as, as part of the holy books. The, the, Jewish, uh, the Jewish scholars were, 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 were uh, contemplating uh, many of them uh, voted to take it out of the, the holy book. And why? Because uh, they, they felt that there's a lot of things in the sequel uh, that, uh, um, that they couldn't understand that. They, it seems like um, God was, the, when the Messiah will come, he will change the Torah. But what, what they finally determined is Yeshua will add, like the, the, the sacrifices, right? The, the way the temple, remember that the, the, the temple that we know then was not the temple that God intended. Remember, the temple was adjusted because of the sin of the golden calf. And, and Ezekiel is describing what the temple service will look like when the Messiah, when the Messiah returns. So in one of his prophecies in the, in the, in the early uh, chapter one, he's talking about, he saw a vision, look at this. And above the firmament, there was over their heads was the likeness of a throne. He saw, he saw heaven, he saw a vision of heaven, and as the appearance of a sapphire stone, and upon the likeness of the stone, the throne was the likeness of the appearance of a man up, up, upon it. So he, he saw a man, he saw the second, the heavenly Adam. And verse 27, and I saw as the color of electrum, as the appearance, I think there's something wrong, Jesse, as the appearance of fire round about, enclosing it from the appearance of his loins and upward, 
and from the appearance of his loins and downward, I saw it, it as it were the appearance of fire and there was brightness around him. So he's seeing this vision of this man that's surrounded with, with brilliant light and fire in verse 27. And as the appearance of, as the appearance of a bow, that is the cloud in the day of rain, as we saw a rainbow, so was his appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face and I heard the voice of one that spoke. So, so here, I, I, Ezekiel literally saw a vision of Yeshua. See, the vision of Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. It's still here. Wow. He saw the he saw the second the the the, the, the second Adam. Go to the next time. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47. Uh, of course, Philippians chapter and, we, and and he appeared as a human being. So you're talking about Yeshua who humbled himself still more by becoming obedient even to death. Say that obedient even to death. Death to the stake as a criminal. Therefore, God raised him up to the holy highest place and gave him a name above every name. Verse First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. In fact, the Tanakh says, Adam, the first man, became a living you, a living human being, but the last Adam has become a life-giving spirit. So he's talking about Yeshua, the second Adam. Note, however, that the body from the spirit didn't come first, but the contrary, every human, the one from the spirit comes afterward. The first man is from the earth made of dust, but the second man is from heaven. So he's talking about Yeshua. Yeshua brought a sacrifice to God by his own soul, according to the Torah, the, 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 the burnt offering, the, the all offering was not a sin offering. It was not made in order to atone for sin. It was made so that people of Israel could bring a gift to God. The word Ola in Hebrew means to go up, to arise, the same root as the word aliyah, which means to uh, to move to the land of Israel. It also means when somebody is being asked to read the Torah, he's being asked to aliyah. Why? Because you are elevating yourself. Are you still here? Mm -hmm. So it also means that the, the you know the, the, it ola ola. It's the only offering that goes up entirely to God. This is the only one that gets burned entirely. Are you still here? Yeah. Remember the all others, you know, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's a split between the priest and God and sometimes it's a split between the priest, the giver and their friends. But the burnt offering, the all offering is the only one <clears throat> where the entire animal is signed. Are you still here? Yeah. And with the, with the other sacrifice, as I said, a bit goes to the priest to eat, the, uh, some to the other people as a peace offering. But the, all the sacrifice represents a total, say total, and complete reliance on God. It is like taking if, if, a, if a, a whole cow today costs $1,000, I don't know how much the cow is. It's like you took $1,000 and burned it. Why? Because everything goes to God. There's no profit for the Ola is selfless. He is selfless. It's given totally over to God. So Yeshua was the ultimate. See that he's the ultimate example of an Ola. He lived a life in complete selflessness, giving himself entirely to God. As Yeshua said, remember in Matthew, 26 verse 39 when he was uh, about to be crucified he said let this cup uh, pass by me but not my will not what I want but you know will be done amen it's a mm -hmm. he totally surrendered the Torah portion by Ikra again contains various instruction about the offering to which the all the sacrifice in general 
they have a very strong significance to Yeshua. But again, all the other sacrifices point to Yeshua. Are you still here? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, with that, I think uh, I'm ending my. But uh, what I wanted to say is, so that's why when we when we bring a sac, when we enter the presence of God in the altar, when we enter this, the first thing we see is God is reminding us of Yeshua. God is reminding, and, and that re that reminder is not so that we can go back and sin again. The reminder is for us to repent and be transformed so that we can enter in. Amen. And God wants us to, God wants to use you and I. He wants us to, to, uh, to be used by him because he wants us to be slide. Go to the next slide. And to conclude tonight, the book, the book of Leviticus is the least read part of the Bible. And yet it speaks of the calling and ministry has get, Hashem has given us. No wonder the enemy hates are studying this book. Why? Because it is our calling. This is the reason why he called us. And it's important for us to learn what it is to, what it takes to draw near to God. Are you still here? That's why the first step of drawing near to Hashem is laying down our life to Yeshua and turning away from our sins. We are to enter his tabernacle and to love and serve him. Amen? Are you ready to enter in today, let us pray. Father, we thank you today. Father, we thank you for reminding us of our calling. We are called to be your priests. We are called to bring life and light to the, to the nations, to the people around us, and to, 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 to tell them of the great news that you have uh, set us free so we can freely serve you. And we can serve you. You have a, you have a path that leads to life. And your, your, your word leads to life. And we thank you today. We lift up every family and every uh, individuals, and we thank you as we prepare for the taste, the, the Passover Seder, uh, the Passover Lamb, uh, the month of Nisan, reminding us that this is the year, this is the month of redemption, this is the month of freedom, and uh, for whatever bondages or addictions, whatever it is that is binding us, Father, we thank you that. We set we set those we set the people free right now in the name of Yeshua, by the blood of Yeshua. We thank you today in Yeshua the Messiah. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Amen.